Hey everybody, um, I want to make a video on the super moon because like I just feel like I've like had it up to a certain point and I've kind of gotten this like, I don't know, like whatever's going to happen is going to happen the other day. And by the other day, I mean like a month ago. I heard in my head, um, not like an actual voice, but I heard like a message and it was be read and read from the Shawshank Redemption. And it, that message came to me so clear. It was like, you know, one of those beautiful little um, serendipitous epiphanies that I need to be like that with my actions. And that's what I've been working towards pretty much since, you know, on a foundational level to just process like trauma, let go of whatever I need to let go of. So I can like be at this point where I can live the tenets of the serenity prayer just in my daily um, actions. And even like in my inaction, like just with my resting state of being, I want to really live the serenity prayer, which is like the only prayer I think that anybody ever needs just to, um, have the serenity to accept what I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And if you can do that and really just live by that, let go of everything that you cannot control and just control what you can, which is only yourself you know, on the best days with intention, if you can do that, if I can do that, then that's, that's it. And, you know, that's really, um, like the bottom line of, of red in the Shawshank Redemption. He really has this like beautiful, um, arc of a story where he wanted this thing so bad. He wanted his freedom back. He wanted a chance at redemption. He wanted a chance like to prove to himself that, his life does not end in this like literal and figurative prison. And, you know, when you want something so badly, it's like, you know, it's just, I don't know. You know how you just like push things away when you, when you, when you want something and it's like, you could just like love it to death or want it so much that you like repel it or just get in your own head about it. Um, I heard Jordan Peterson say that being self-aware is like, um, basically there's no difference between being self-aware and suffering, which is like <laughs> so, um, accurate because I've been self-aware my entire life and it's been like a curse. It is literally like a curse to be self-aware. I was in, I have been in an existential crisis since preschool. And so I'm just trying to like, let the shit go that, I can't control and we can't control any of this stupid shit. And my, um, one of my really good friends died yesterday and I knew she was going to die. Like we got in contact. She, she contacted me after years of not talking and we were both kind of like shit the bed of life independently and lost contact for years and she got in touch with me um about th two and a half three years ago and we had like um a year and a half to two years of just like this amazing friendship where we had been through a lot of this of similar things we were um parents to small children and we were just like taking um, this opportunity to have this second chance and to not like push good things away. And the last time I saw her, I knew like she had, um, reverted back to these old ways. And I, I just knew, you know, it, ju it just wasn't the same. And so, you know, I said my piece, I tried to help. I said, this is what's helped me. But I, I did all I can do, which was say, this is what worked for me. You know, you're better than this. You can, you can do this. I'm not doing anything that you weren't doing and we weren't doing and you haven't done before. And you can, you can do this. And, um, and, you know, just contact me as soon as you're ready to, to try to, to do it again. 
and I didn't hear from her. I didn't hear from her. You know, she like quit responding in the, in a, a later on version of that text message. Like after, um, she left my house for the last time we were texting and then she just stopped responding to the conversation. Um, I messaged her like a generic Merry Christmas at Christmas. Didn't hear anything. And I messaged her once after that and I didn't hear anything. And so I was like, okay, if I don't hear from her, I'm going to hear that she died, you know, and I just knew it. I mean, every, <laughs> that's the only, that's the only options, you know, you either like give your soul to this like wraith of an escape or you, um, you control what you can and you have the courage to change what you can, which is yourself. But you have to like consciously, diligently take those steps. And those steps are often like just thoughts by thought by thought. And, um, so I didn't hear from her and then, you know, I, I heard she died and man, there's only been like three people of all the people that I've known that have died, which, you know, every addict has that, has that same depressing, um, like asterisk in their history and in their heart where it's like, oh yeah, 20 people and counting, or I can't, I've lost track after 15, you know, everybody has that who's gone through like, um, like having this like interpersonal relationship with this devil and that's why the devil card is the card of addiction. I and, mean, you know, we're all addicted to something. We all sell our soul for something. We all, you know, we don't even sell it. A lot of times we're like, we're like, here, take it off my hands. You give a piece to yourself to whatever you give your attention to, you know? And that's like why people, I don't know why they get so mad at celebrities. Like they sold their soul. We all sell our soul or give it away. You know, it's a trade. We just have to... um it's like that Kurt Vonnegut quote, um, to paraphrase, cause I know this isn't going to be exact, but basically be careful what you pretend to be because you are who you pretend to be. Um, you know, we're all going to, to give it away, but you know, the devil card is the, the card of addiction and tarot because it's a lie and it's a lie when you need some little glimmer of truth and even if you know it's a lie and you know it's it's doesn't do anything but exacerbate the problem it's like this sickness that feels like a cure it's so like that's so twisted and and I knew like there was nothing I could do I knew there was nothing I, I knew I wasn't gonna have regrets because there, I know there's nothing I can say and that's all you can do with an addict is say you know, get the, I'll be here when you're ready. And you hope that that time comes, but you know, of course I think like, I just wish I, you know, maybe would have said like, just reached out once more, even though it was like pointless, truly. And so I'm just trying to, um, you know, when we all fucking have that choice, you know, it's like fate or destiny and what happens is the destiny, all of it. What happens is the destiny, but it's like your fate doesn't have to be your destiny. You know, it's like fate just seems like you just acquiesce and just submit. And it's like, yeah, I'm not going to like be aware that I do have um, control, even if it's like, you know, next to no amount of control. I mean, you, you have control over some part of your life, you know, you're not walking around like naked, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, everybody has like some semblance of control and you just have to like think, you know, about, like the big picture. And it's like, how do you even say that? Because and, and you can't until you can, you can't see anything until you can, you can't do it I anything until you can. And so I don't know. It just sucks. Like I knew it was coming, but it's just like ridiculous. So what am I going to do? Um, 
I'm going to like miss her, you know, all that same old shit. And I'm just going to try to continue because this whole, this whole world is bullshit, you know? Um, and it's not like in reality, in the day to day, in her hearts and in, in her soul, it's beautiful. But this, um, this like mirage of a, of a world, this society is, is bullshit. It is. So I'm trying to like disregard all of this noise. You know, I can't stand, I feel like every single person on this planet is like a kind of a hostage in a way to the regime of their political party. I can't stand these people. They're, they're phony and they're disingenuous. And I'm just trying to personally look at the elections like three weeks away and what the fuck does it matter you know oh my god pardon my french but really like what does it matter it doesn't you know we all just need to look at it like it's four weeks out like it's a year and four weeks out because at some point right now is going to be a year after the election it's going to be 2025 in no time and whatever happens is going to happen and we're not going to have any control over it we can do what we feel that we can do in the moment but at the end of the day, it's going to happen anyway. If democracy was on the ballot, <laughs> Harris and Biden would have never been on the ballot because nobody voted for these fucking fools. If Dem <laughs> And Trump, I mean, who cares? You know, people have so many people say Trump's horrible. And guess what? He was in president for four years. What's he going to do? Like in democracy with lower <laughs> gas and milk prices? You know, people say, hey, um, Kamala is, Harris is the worst. I mean, what's she going to do? You know, even if you think Trump and Harris are, are horrible, which they are, they both are. But really, like that, they've both been in office for years and we still have no control over what they're doing and they don't give a shit about us. You know, all this stuff like, you know, it's like compassionate to give out drug paraphernalia, like clean paraphernalia since when? You know, if you're not going to be compassionate enough to give people homes and to not sidestep them on the streets, people are living 24-7 on the sidewalks and on the streets, and you think it's fucking compassionate to give them, like, syringes and crack pipes because they're clean? If that's all you do, that's nothing. But that's all they ever do is just, like, this mirage of compassion, this mirage of sensibility and, like, caring. They don't care so what can we do like we can just like try to be red you know just um <laughs> that's what I, that's this is what i'm trying to do and look how stable i am we can just try to not worry about like changing someone else's mind or getting someone to see some type of like truth that we know inherently to be true and we can just say, fuck it, you know, okay, sirrah, sirrah, whatever will be, will be, you know, you're going to do what you're going to do. And so I have to do me to the best of my ability um, in the interim. And, you know, it's like those uh, one hit wonder famously said, all you need is love. And, and that's true. And if we just live from the heart, you know, it, it's going to be okay. It, it is. And so I just have to remind myself of that. And, um, I wish Eden had remembered that, but I, I can't live for anybody else. Um, I can only live for myself, take it one day at a time, but it's like so much small take it one thought at a time, one step at a time from a heart-based perspective and, you know, disregard the rest. Y'all have a good night.